Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having an unbelievable week. I hope that you are getting out of life what you want out of it. If not, you know who to talk to. I would love to have you as a client, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about uh, book number 23, released a few weeks ago, Merging Souls, Healing, Hope, and Restoration in Modern Marriage. Uh, it is a follow-up to book number four. It took me a while to get back to it. So many things that I'm passionate about and that I wanted to touch on over the years that it took me a while to get back to it. But it's one of the things I'm passionate about. I talk and teach on it a lot. I've written on it a lot. Just didn't do it in the form of a book. But I did follow up with Merging Souls. Merging Souls and uh, When Your House Is Not a Home, which is the fourth book, is heavily centered on helping people navigate the labyrinthine corridors of marriage committed covenantal relationships and how it works how it looks and what it is and what it isn't and so much more one thing that's common that's a common thread between both books is that i use an excerpt from the bible while the book isn't religious it's definitely spiritual. It's definitely connected to the divine source of God. Uh, and it simply uses a principle that is brought forth and taught in religion, uh, in multiple religions. And I'd simply use a very powerful and well-known passage in uh, Christian scripture and doctrine in the New Testament to bring this topic home and to teach. And I do this to couples in counseling. I do this in lectures and seminars. And I want to bring it forth in the book. So I'm going to read the passage to you. Uh, it's going to definitely incite some emotion and feelings because everybody has their own way of interpreting it. It has their own feelings about it based on their own life experiences. But it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as also, Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, let, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present to her himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that should be... Uh, holy and without blemish so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes it and cherishes it just as the lord does the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let one of you, let each one of you, in particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. And I have spent great time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I own two doctorates. Obviously, we see that one of the doctorates I own is actually in theology; the other in psychology. But uh, in theology. So I have spent a great deal of time breaking down, anatomizing, analyzing scripture in context, using hermeneutic principles and uh, such as isagogics and uh, exegesis and so many other things to make sure that I am gaining, gaining a true understanding of what's going on. Uh, this isn't the argument for Christianity. This isn't the argument for any a Abrahamic faith or beyond. This is simply saying, okay, there's a principle here that obviously works when you when you pass through and you look at time, when you study the psychology of marriage, when you study the psychology of male and female, what is presented in this one passage is powerful. Why? Because if you study and you do your research, one thing you will find is that men, as a general rule, value respect above love. Most men would rather be respected than they would feel to, to feel loved. It's how we are. It's how we operate. Uh, that was in doing the research for the first book, When Your House Is Not at Home, I came across uh, several studies that reveal this. One of the studies was a study of 4,000 men. 4,000 men would ask the question, if you had a choice of being in a situation where you know you were loved, but you were consistently disrespected one way or another, or felt disrespected in one way or another, 
would you prefer that or would you prefer to be on an island by yourself isolated forever and 80 plus percent of the men chose to be isolated forever and never be disrespected than to be in an environment where they know the person cared about them but still had a tendency to disrespect them it's that powerful you go to uh u.s penal systems you will find <clears throat> that a great deal of the violent crimes committed have to do with respect uh when studying african-american adolescent and young adult male violence i found that the number one uh influential factor above socialization which i do a great deal of work in but the number one factor is the feeling of feel, being disrespected that's a core element it's ingrated in the male dna on the flip side women tend to respond to the feeling of being loved and they have a way of defining that each and end of themselves but there is a behavior that they interpret as love and they need to feel that they need to feel the security of it they need to feel the intimacy of it they need to feel uh, that they're protected, that they're covered, all of this. Now, the thing is, Dr. Emerson Egrets, uh, which is, I, I quoted him in a book, and in, in, in addressing that, he says, when a husband feels disrespected, he has a natural tendency to react in a way that feels unloving to his wife. Perhaps this is the reason that this particular uh, command is given specifically to the man. When the wife feels unloved, she has a natural tendency to react in ways that feel disrespectful to her husband. And so there can be this cycle of feeling disrespected and then behaving in an unloving way, thereby perpetuating a behavior of disrespect from the wife. Uh, the core element of this is to understand that there's a depth to this. Outside of the religious connotations, you have to understand something. Uh, when a wife respects her husband, she literally builds him up. She literally encourages his pro-social, pro-loving behavior. And when a man loves a wife, uh, there are two terms that are used that, that I put a lot of work in. He says, no man hates his own flesh, but nurses and cherishes it. The Greek for that is in the sense of almost a what we would consider a female behavior but the greek word for nourishes is actually to brood over to cover and protect as a hen protects her her hatchlings or the or, or the eggs before they hatch or the hatchlings it is a nurturing situation in other words it's not simply the man's responsibility to be a provider but to be a protector but not just a protector of the person's physicality but a protector of the person's idea of themselves and their vision it is the man's job and purpose to pour into the woman and encourage and lift and to educate and to enlighten he has to be a leader he has to be someone who has something to offer her that can take her to another level in and of herself not just take her there himself by saying i'm providing i'm giving but to be able to pour in her to uh, to nurture her in a way that she grows into herself that she becomes the powerful force that she's capable of in return she has a requirement to then also respect him now here's the beautiful part about this thing it's covenantal what does that mean covenantal means that it's not conditional it's based it's based on the covenant, the covenant of commitment, the covenant before God, the covenant before yourselves. It is contractual. It is, I do this regardless. I tell people all the time to think that I have this unabated, uninterrupted, absolute emotional charge the entire time I'm with my wife is not realistic. I love my wife. I'm very careful how I treat my wife. I'm very careful how I speak to my wife. I'm very careful in the tone in which I deliver any message I give my wife. I never speak negatively or down to her. I love her. But there are times that there's something going on and I ain't really feeling her at that moment. And, you, you know, and what, what, uh, one of my mentors taught me, since it's going to be times that you just don't like her. And this is long before I met my wife. We said, when, when, when you get there, it's going to be at times that you just don't like her. But your behavior does not depend upon how you feel. Your behavior depends upon the vow you've taken. My vow was I'm going to love you. The vow is I'm going to cover you. The vow is I'm going to protect you. The vow is I'm going to be this person no matter where we're at at the moment. And so what happens is, check this out, men. What happens is when I love my wife, even when 
She's ticked me off, and I'm not really feeling her at the moment. When I love her, when nothing changes in the way I treat her, I get up every morning, I walk her to her car, I kiss her, I text her to let her know I love her. I, all the things that I do when I'm really like, oh, my God, I'm so crazy about this. Those same things I do when I'm like, oh, my God. It's the same, but the same way, I, there's no difference in the way I treat her because the way I treat her isn't depend upon how I feel. We got too far, far too many people acting on the, and based on how they feel, especially men. We've got to get out of that because we have a responsibility as men to operate at a higher level of reason and rationale and commitment over emotion. So we've got to get to that part. That's what I talk about in this book, and I talk about so much more, but that's, that's a part of it. Now, women, you're not without responsibility. This, 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 the idea of respecting your husband, yes, when he's in alignment with what he's doing, when he's living up to everything, when he's loving you the way he's supposed to love you, yes, you feel like going out and just showing him a lot of love and respect. But you got to understand, there's a level of humanity that both of you possess. And sometimes he's not going to be on his A game. Sometimes he's going to be caught up in himself. And, 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 and he, he, he needs a chance to find himself. But what you can't do is in the moment when he's not at his best, remove your respect as if it's contingent upon him being 100 percent on, on point all the time because then that adds a level of uh of pressure that that uh of feeling disrespected and the last thing a man wants to think is if i'm off a little bit I, i'm gonna get the business i'm not gonna get the same love he needs to know that I, I've got room to be off a little bit. I got room to make a couple of mistakes as long as I can correct it and I can fix it and I can get back to where we need to be. This is a unified thing that's designed to create a synergistic force that raises the elevation and level of the capacity of each individual. So now you're functioning at a level in, in unison that you could not achieve in individuality and now the world is looking and responding to that power and that force you're also in the best position now to model manhood and womanhood to your progeny preparing them to be optimal candidates for marriage and this is just a part of this thing that i'm really on right now where marriage especially in the black community is in, under uh, uh, absolute 100 percent assault and what they've done is they found a way to turn us against one another we are waging war against one another we are blaming one another for everything instead of sitting out and saying okay how do we work this out how do we figure this out how do we get to a point where we're on the same page where we are helping one another lifting one another uh building one another instead of tearing one another down that's the thing i want you to focus on if you haven't gotten merging souls Healing Hope and Restoration in Modern Marriage. Check, check the link out in the description box. Make it happen. I, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. I promise you. If, you. if you're ever thinking about getting married, you're engaged to get married, you're in a marriage, or even contemplating coming out of a marriage, or whether you ever want to be married again, you want to read this book. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I'm out with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.